Kia ora, I'm Wim, and this is the third instalment of our video tutorial series for the Apollo Dynamic Multiplayer Campaign. In this video we'll cover what a day is, where supply comes from, how supply moves around the map, and how supply movement can be blocked by player actions. This is probably the most complicated part of the Apollo supply system to understand, but it's based on very simple building blocks. So we'll start with those simple blocks and then build in complexity. The first thing to understand is that Apollo is built around missions which are two hours long. Each of these two hour missions represent a day of the campaign. Here we can see we're flicking through the days and the front line is moving back and forth as players on each side push the front in various areas. How does this actually happen? Well we talked last episode about how supply is destroyed and how reducing the supply level of an objective also reduces its influence zone and that when those influence zones cancel out, Apollo draws the front line. But if supply was just a static thing to be destroyed, then objectives on both sides of the front line would just be bombed to rubble and the front line would just stagnate with all these bombed out targets on either side. In Apollo, supply isn't just a static thing to be destroyed. It's also created and moved around the map. So long as they aren't being continually bombed, objectives will slowly regain their supply and slowly repair themselves. Exactly how this happens is kind of complicated, so we'll start with a simplified example. Imagine we have an objective near the front line. We'll call it Defense Alpha and say it has 100 supply. Imagine Defense Alpha gets bombed by a squadron of enemy aircraft. This reduces its supply from 100 to 50. The day ends and now Defense Alpha needs to be resupplied. So, Apollo looks around for a friendly objective further behind the front line, and it finds Depot Beta, an undamaged objective with 200 supply, it's his max supply level. And this doesn't have to be a 200 supply objective by the way, it could be a 100 supply objective, it could be a 300 supply objective. The point is that this Depot has plenty of supply to spare, it's right up at its max supply. So, it donates some of its supply to repair the damage at Defense Alpha. But here's where it gets complicated. We don't want a situation where Defense Alpha is being bombed to rubble and then fully replenishing the next day. And we also don't want a situation where Depot Beta donates all its supply to Defense Alpha and effectively destroys itself. So, Apollo imposes limits on how much supply can be sent and received by each objective. This is intended to make the flows of supply between objectives feel more realistic. Now at this point you may be wondering where all the supply comes from in the first place. Well, each day every large 300 supply objective as well as every airfield generates a small amount of new supply. This is meant to represent new material being manufactured in factories or flown in by air transport from far in the rear. For example, let's say Defense Alpha suffers 50 supply worth of damage from enemy bombing. It then gets 20 supply from Depot Beta. Now Depot Beta in turn needs its supply replenished, so it gets that 20 supply from Factory Gamma. Factory Gamma is a 300 supply objective, so it then generates 20 new supply to replenish itself. If you scale this up to a map wide level, you start to see a network of supply lines, with supply being generated at large objectives in the rear and moved up towards the front line. And by the way, supply can only move towards the front line, objectives cannot send supply backwards. And to be very clear, this is all happening in the background, because as much as we would love all these movements of supply to be represented by thousands of little trucks and trains moving between the objectives, that would melt the server. That said, it is still possible to disrupt the movement of supply. Let's go back to our simplified example. 
As in our previous example, Defence Alpha has been bombed from 100 to 50 supply and is now looking to get resupplied from Depot Beta. But now imagine another squadron of aircraft has also bombed Depot Beta, reducing its supply level from 200 to 150. This means it no longer has any spare supply to donate to Defence Alpha. As I've said in previous videos, exact numbers may be fine-tuned in future, but currently the rule is if an objective is reduced below 80% of its maximum supply, it is blocked from donating any supply to other objectives. So in the case of Depot Beta, 80% of 200 is 160, and it's been reduced to 150, so it can't donate supply to Defence Alpha. And this mechanic is why it's important for players to not just attack objectives right on the front line, but also to strike high supply targets in the rear. Because this breaks the lines of supply and prevents those front line targets from being replenished between missions. There are also limits on how far an objective can send its supply. So for example, Airfield Zulu may have tons of supply, but it's 500 kilometers away from the Alpha Defense, so it can't send that supply. The maximum distance an objective can send its supply is generally around 50 to 80 kilometers, with the maximum distance being governed by the sender's supply level. So high supply targets, that's 300 level supply targets, can send supply further than low supply objectives, 100 supply objectives. Understanding the way supply moves around the map is critical for flying effectively in Apollo. Because for example, you may be wondering why you keep bombing the same objective in the campaign, but it never quite seems to die, it always bounces back the next day of the campaign. The most likely reason is that there's another undamaged objective a little further behind the front line which is feeding more supply to your target. If you shifted your focus and made a few strikes on that objective further in the rear, you will cut off that forward objective from resupply, making it far easier to capture. And speaking of capturing objectives, that will be the focus of our next video.